you're broadcasting. Okay. We'll see how well your video skills are. <laughs> Well, I guess we're still in. Yeah, you sit in the corner. Right, so we're probably being viewed. I'll let you know. I think last time we did something at SIU, we ended up having like 100, 200 people. So, okay. um, so kind of get everybody. Just everybody wave and say hi. Hi. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Get everybody. Okay. Nice hand. Face. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. Uh, my name's Tom Harness. I currently own Harness Digital Marketing. Uh, it is a market, digital marketing firm here in Southern Illinois. And I was asked to come talk to your class uh, kind of about what I do. And I did this presentation not too long ago uh, to the Williamson County CEO Entrepreneur Group. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna reuse this one because I think it applies to you guys too. Uh, one of the things that I really want, to try, want you to try to get out of this is to be on time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, is you got to put yourself out there today it is a whole different world and as much as you go through SIU and you're confident and I can see everybody's confident because I got lots of eye contact that's how I can always tell when people are really really passionate about what they do you have to have a little bit more how far are you willing to go to go out there and make things happen and that's kind of what I want to get out of this and I hope that we can motivate you a little bit get a lot of questions, and hopefully someday, five, 10 years down the road, you're asking me if I wanna come work for you. So that'd be awesome. I'm sure you would appreciate that too. Great. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about myself so that way you know that I'm just not walking off the street. So when I talk about putting yourself out there, nothing says that more than when I decided to do my Christmas suit about uh, last Christmas, okay? Mm -hmm. I was frustrated. My daughter was, all she was talking about was what she wanted for Christmas and it became very commercialized for me. And I know that sounds cliche, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally an introvert. I'm kind of walk those. I know when I have to be an extrovert, but I prefer to be an introvert. I'd much rather be in a, in a dark room watching Netflix binges and you know, that's, that's me. But we don't have that opportunity when you're a business owner or you're especially in marketing, right? Can't be an introvert in marketing, just can't. So I said, you know what? I was up late, late one night and I, I, I said, how can we, how can I make Christmas better? How can I get myself in the spirit and then therefore help my customers out? And I said, you know what? I, I was going through Facebook one night and I saw this ad and I'm like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna buy that suit. I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm really gonna put myself out there, let people make fun of me and have to worry about possibly being criticized, being called crazy, goofy, whatever. And I'm just gonna do it. And I'm gonna go around and I'm not gonna say happy holidays, I'm going to tell businesses and business owners, Merry Christmas. That was very important to me. So I go through and ended up, this was like a huge success. Everybody wants to know what my, my suit is going to be this year. Uh, I did a mustache suit for Heron Fest, and it's kind of the running thing that people don't realize I actually own regular suits. So um, my background, I'm originally from South Dakota. I'll say it, but usually nobody ever says any that they are. Anybody from South Dakota? Anybody ever been to South Dakota? Wow. Can anybody tell me what's in South Dakota? Mount Rushmore. Bam. Anybody else? Anything else? The horse. Sioux Falls, what? The, the horse. Crazy horse. Crazy. Crazy horse, very good. So I'm originally, I was born in Spirit Creek, South Dakota. Um, I graduated high school from there. My parents were uh, divorced, so I went back and forth a lot between Kansas and South Dakota. So even though I say Rapid City, that's where I ended up, but I spent a lot of time, I moved around, I went to nine different elementary schools. So we moved around a lot. I was a new kid quite a lot. Um, my bachelor's is in, you'll be surprised, SIU, uh, but in elementary education. And my master's is in administrative education. I taught for nine years. And uh, I taught in Heron fifth grade. And I also taught at Unity Point kindergarten through eighth grade technology classes for three years. And yes, I did teach here at SIU for one year. Uh, it was uh, an experience, we'll leave it at that. Uh, frustrations, lots. Students were amazing. Um, but I, I've always wanted to practice what I preach, and it was hard when you're, sometimes you're as an instructor and a teacher, even in any grades, K all the way up, you're bound by a lot of other things that you can't do. And that was very frustrating for me. So I do better when I don't have any limitations, I think. so. so Bless your teacher back there to, to hang in there and continue on because it takes persistence to do that. Uh, 
From 92 to 96, I was in the U.S. Army. I was a satellite communication systems operator. Uh, I did my training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I uh, went to school at Fort Gordon, Georgia. Got shipped off to South Korea. Came back to Fort Huachuca, Arizona. Got deployed to Saudi Arabia. Came back, went back to Fort Gordon, Georgia, and I had a very fast four years. But uh, probably I will tell people that was the best four years of my life serving my country, because that's all I ever wanted to do as a kid, was to go in the military. Uh, and then pretty much what I told you there. And then when I left uh, SIU, I, there was a position at Walker's Bluff to be their chief information officer. So I did that and I took that for about two, two and a half years. Uh, learned a lot about business, learned uh, a lot about finance, learned a lot about everything uh, that helped me kind of get where I am. So I put this up here because I, I really want you guys to, to hone in on the fact that everything that you do pretty much from even a little kid, but high school on, every one of these, whether they were successes, failures, frustrations, got me to where I am today. And I'm 41, I'll be 42 next month. And I can tell you that when I turned 40, that's when my life started. So I know your parents are probably maybe getting on to you about choosing and deciding and wanting to be this and that, but I'm gonna tell you, sometimes it takes you a little bit, but enjoy and appreciate all the steps you have. Jobs you like, jobs you don't like, frustrations, setbacks, all of that will get you to that day from you working your butts off, except for the Cardinals fan. Sorry, I'm a Cubs fan, I gotta pick on you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> All that will come together and, and you'll look back, hopefully you look back and you reflect and you say, wow, I wouldn't have changed anything because it got me to where I am today. And I think that really applies in marketing too because you'll have successes and failures, but there's no such thing as a failure. It's another opportunity to do something better. And that's so important that you don't give up. So any questions about my background or anything before we move on? Do I get a little street cred to come in here? Just a little? Okay. All right. So this was my favorite part to do with the Williams CEO program. Is anybody familiar? You, I'm sure you and I are, I don't know how old you are, but I'm sure you're gonna get this. Anybody familiar or have anybody watched the movie Spartacus? Oh, oh, that's right. See, this is the world in an age gap. Yes, there is, a sh there is a TV show, but I don't know if they've done this specific clip in the TV show. This is the movie. Have you seen the movie? All right, <laughs> highly encourage you to at least look at this clip. Now, it, is, has, it does have religious overtone, but what I want you to get out of it is something a little bit different from a marketing standpoint. Uh, can everybody see that, or would you like me to shut the light off? Lights, okay. And I turned the volume up as much as I could on this thing. Okay, here we go. I bring a message from your master. Gives me goosebumps every time I see that. Um, so you might be thinking, or actually you're smart, how do you think this applies to, to marketing, PR? What do you think? Yes? What is all, if you're doing something as a group or a team, all is one, one is all. Right. When you're an entrepreneur, when you're marketing, when you're doing anything in life in general, sometimes you think you're alone, right? You gotta stand up for what you believe. PR, you're gonna to have to do that a lot, right? You're gonna to have to throw yourself out there and defend something that you might not necessarily wholeheartedly either believe 
or you believe and you know nobody's going to back you up. Uh, a good example, local, or not local, but recently, the clerk, the county clerk. You don't have to have a political or religious view to know that a woman didn't want to issue licenses because of what she believed. It doesn't matter if you like it or not, she stood up and people rallied around her. Same way, the flip side, people rallied around the opposite side. It's no right or wrong, it's people standing up. And in PR, you're gonna have to stand up a lot of times, but here's the deal. You have to have a team. You have to have, if it's just you, you gotta have your boss, you gotta have the salespeople, you gotta have uh, the accounting people. You have to have everybody on board with you so that way you're not alone. You need to be able to stand up and be able to go out there and present or do anything in the class, whatever, and do it with conviction and own it and know that you're not alone. That's where this is this is all about. That's what I love about that clip. I use that one. I use that when I taught too, just because you're not really alone. You've got to stand up and you got to make hard decisions. You do. But I love this clip. If you ever get anything get anything out of today, remember this clip and Spartacus and everybody standing up and saying, I am Spartacus. Now, depending on how well the class goes, I made the Williamson CEO, the high school kids, they all had to go stand up and say, I am Williamson CEO. So we'll see how the class goes because I did that and I got a little nervous faces here, especially this one right here. She's looking at me a little nervous. <laughs> all right, where are you now? I'm all about sometimes the shock value, right? So I say you have to put yourself out there. Nobody put themselves out there more than last year at the Oscars than Neil Patrick Harris coming on stage in his underwear, right? I can't think of anything bigger than that, can you? Well, I mean, that we could talk about. Uh, that we've had some Super Bowl mishaps, right? But those were accidents. Literally comes out, puts everything on the table. How many of you are willing to put everything on the table? Nobody? One. Four, it depends. Okay, it depends on what? What I'm putting on the table for, like for family, I'm about to put it all on the table. Okay. Nobody says anything about an employer or a job or SIU. Would you put yourselves out there for this department if something was gonna happen? Would you put yourself out there on the line for your teacher? Well, we got a yes over here. You just went up a grade level. <laughs> What are you willing and how far are you willing to go? And the how far you're willing to go doesn't mean anything ethical. It really just means going back to stepping outside your comfort zone. We all have limits and most of those limits are we don't want to put ourselves out there. Why? Because of one word. What is that word? Embarrassment. Well, embarrassment's part of it. Failure. Failure's part of it too, but those all co are covered Fear. under one word. Starts with an F. Fear. 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 Would you go out this door and just say, I am Spartacus, or, <laughs> and with no rivalry, would you do that? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But not necessarily because it's funny, then that means maybe you're not necessarily stepping outside your comfort zone, right? That means there's other things that you're, you're scared of. And what I told the Williamson CEO group was, I want you, I challenge you, to write three things that you're afraid of, that you're scared of. And those are the things you need to overcome within the year. Talking to someone, having a, a, a discussion uh, about a, a whatever topic it might be. Talking to a, a friend, talking to someone that you didn't normally do because they weren't a friend. Doing things that you don't normally do conditions your brain to step outside a comfort zone and it will help you look at things differently when you wanna do marketing and perspective. I always try to have those little flip, those little duels in my head about what, what I could do more. Because none of you, none of me, instructors know everything, especially when it comes to marketing. We were just talking about how much it changes within two to three years. There's something new. We're streaming this on Periscope. How many of you are familiar with Periscope? One, two. <clears throat> Huge tool. Guess who's starting to use it more? TV and radio and newspaper. Who would ever thought, right? TV too. They're using it. So step outside your comfort zone. So I wanna know, where are some of the places you guys are online socially now? Where are you at networking and connecting? Let's hear some of them. Other than the obvious like Facebook, right? Which you probably aren't, most college kids aren't. Snapchat, right? 
Where are we at? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. How many of you are on LinkedIn? No? Okay, today you're on LinkedIn. Make it happen. Everybody, help him out. He needs to get on LinkedIn when? Today, help him out. LinkedIn's great because I want to know about you. I want to know about your professionalism. I want to know if you're interacting with people online. Don't be scared. Don't think, oh, I'm not going to interact because I don't know that much. I'm still in college. I don't care. Ask questions. Interact. When people start seeing you online, it's impressive. I hired a high school student because I presented at an FBLA. Anybody familiar with FBLA? Future Business Leaders of America, right? She comes up to me, high school student. This was last, so she was 16. She comes up to me. She shakes my hand. Hi, I'm, I'm Harley uh, Crawshaw. I thought your presentation was great. Uh, and I wanted to know if you had any openings. I didn't think about a high school student. I said, well, this was impressive. Kate comes up to me and I said, well, what are you interested in? She goes, well, I wanna go into journalism one day. And I said, okay, how's your writing? She goes, well, I've done some writing. I can send you a sample. Didn't even have to ask. I said, sure. So this is where it really took a different turn. And I said, send it to me. This is where I lose high school kids because they don't follow through. And for the most part, no offense, sometimes college students don't follow through because they've applied for jobs with me and they don't send me you know, uh, examples of their writing. That day, she went home. That night, I got an email from her and I said, listen, let's, let's have you and your mom come in and let's talk. And guess what? I hired her. I got her mom involved and she's been amazing. I have to, I have to remember sometimes that she's a high school student. When you can hire people or you get impressed with people, not because of race, color, anything, but by sheer impressiveness that they're willing to go out of their way and make things happen, that's the kind of people I want. That's the kind of people that want to hire you. So get on LinkedIn, go talk to people, connect with them. I don't care. Be genuine, but connect with them. You got to be on LinkedIn if you want to, if you want to really go somewhere. So. Who do you network with? We know that you have a PSR organization. What are the organization? What are the networks do you have? How do you network? <clears throat> are you networking? Should have been doing this back in high school. Yeah. So if you just speak with people, you never know who someone knows. Even if you have someone in your field, if you speak with someone, they may know someone. Like, oh, well, I know someone in that field. I can contact you or, you know. Absolutely. And it's being genuine about it. So there's all kinds of networks. I'm involved in the Knights of Columbus. I'm involved in all four of the chambers on 13, Carterville, Carbondale, Heron, and Marion. Uh, I'm involved in the Rotary, Carterville Rotary organization. So those are all organizations that I'm involved in that allow me to network. And when I say network, I don't mean where I can capitalize on someone else. It's literally, I wanna connect the dots for people. That's one of the things that most people say that I've done really well is that I network and I find ways to make people connect and get together to make awesome things. Whether it's to raise money, to start a new business, that's what I do. And indirectly, it, it benefits me, but indirectly. I don't go out and say, hi, my name's Tom Harness, what can you do for me, right? You can't do that, and, and, and that's just not gonna happen. So you've gotta be conscious of your networks and be open to people that you wouldn't normally talk to. I'm being honest got to talk to people you wouldn't normally step outside your comfort zone that's one of your fears when you go into a room pick a couple of people that are like yeah I probably wouldn't normally talk to them and you go over there you got to do that all the stuff I'm telling you if you literally buy into it today it will change your life I promise you that because you'll start to see things happen so get involved in organizations so I gave you kind of a list of mine to give you an idea are you involved in any other organizations I said I'm, I was now. Okay. But, and if you're not involved, does it mean you still can't have those networks, right? Yeah, you can still go to like the, uh, like the conferences and stuff. That would be cool. Yeah, and conferences are great too. What about you? you um, so the Athletics, Special Olympics. Special Olympics, great. What about you? Oh, just PRSA. Okay. Um, I don't know PRSA too, but NAACP. Yeah. So is it, do they have a chapter here on campus? In NAACP? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it was just started back up last semester. Okay. Okay, excellent. What about you? Um, I'm in PRSA, I'm a Sigma Kappa, and I'm on Integrate Council. Okay, so all these, you, I want to know what you're in. What are you involved in? 
Uh, I'm involved in a lot of community volunteering um, okay. between Rainbow Cafe, that's a youth volunteering, and I've also worked for um, Women's Center. So most of these organizations are ones that you're already familiar with, right? Right? They're in your field, or they're in something you like. Again, step outside your comfort zone. Try some different organizations. Ask some of your colleagues here, what are some other ones that you like? I would be definitely interested in NAACP because it's not one I know much about, I've not really been involved with, but it interests me. It just interests me. I can't tell you why, it's just different. And I wanna know more about it. Groups we've already talked about. So I'm beating into your head over and over, step outside your comfort zone and things will happen. I'm proof of that. Once I decided to take my business and, and own it and step outside my comfort zone and try some different things, things just took off and it's been awesome. It's physically draining. Uh, I was gonna tell you, uh, start this, that I had such a crazy weekend that I thought I was gonna have to come in here and fake it because I wasn't that excited about this this morning because I'm, I'm literally m mentally and emotionally drained from this weekend of having to have benefits and raise money and I had to volunteer for bingo and I could go on and on. But when I got in here and I saw most of you uh, when you first came in, eye contact, shake, shake hands, uh, everything was just, I was like, wow, this is a really good group. Not the typical students that I'm used to. Very, very professional. So I appreciate you getting me motivated to not have to fake it today. So there you go. Where should you be? All right, LinkedIn, definitely. Now we already talked about that. Twitter, I love, how many of you are on Twitter? Okay, well, let me, maybe a better question is, how many of you do not get Twitter? You're on it, but you can be on it, but just don't get it. All right, what I love about Twitter is the fact that you can literally connect typically with most anybody in any industry, in any field. So if I said, who is your PR marketing guru genius that you just think walks on water? Who would you tell me? Would you tell me some of their names? Who? Usually I get Shark Tank people, but anybody? You don't have any mentors or anybody that's just out there that you're like, wow, I want to be like them someday. For me, it was Steve Jobs. And of course, unfortunately, I can't really uh, fault Steve Jobs because he passed away. However, uh, you know, I like, to, not that I agree with everything Mark Cuban does. I like to follow Mark Cuban on Twitter. I like to see the real world. Uh, Damon John, I like to follow Damon John online too. He's very active on Twitter and Periscope and everything. I, and he's an Instagram, he's really good on Instagram too. Very motivational. If you walk into a room and you're the smartest person in the room, is that good or bad? Horrible. Why? If you think you're the smartest person in the room, you're not going to take time to try to watch someone else's room. Yeah. Never. You're the you're the you're the you're the most expensive and nicest house on the block, and that's not a good thing when you go to sell it. So if you want to really own your craft and, and be career minded, you got to surround yourself outside your comfort zone with people that you know, and you're okay with being smarter than you. Not arrogant. Smarter. They're willing to be mentors, leaders, share their, share their knowledge. That's what's important. Uh, I always love, because I grew up with Michael Jordan. I'm not a huge basketball fan, I never have been, but it just happened to be when I was in high school, Michael Jordan was it, and I started watching basketball. And I didn't like basketball, I appreciated Michael Jordan. But Michael Jordan was awesome, because Michael Jordan just didn't play with anybody. He played with the best of the best at that time. And that's why Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan. You want to be good at basketball, you keep playing against Michael Jordan, right? If you want to be good at golf, you be, well, I guess that's a horrible one because Tiger's not doing that well anymore, but you have to have, you have to find other people that you're willing to do. My business, I try to hire people smarter than me. Why? Because I don't have all the answers. Your bosses, your leaders, mentors don't all have the answers. They surround themselves with people and they, they, they draw experience they draw uh, compassion, they draw every emotion from them to help make them better. So when you look around the room and you know your colleagues, there's some of you that are probably, and I don't mean this in a bad way, smarter in certain fields or certain areas. Talk to them. Those of you that think you've got a really good uh, handle on some of the topics that you go through, your responsibility is to find someone smarter than you 
and also share your knowledge with anybody that you can to help them. And again, not be arrogant, but share the knowledge. You got to do that. So, Twitter, I really, I really like everybody to be on LinkedIn and make sure that when you get on LinkedIn today, you search me up, connect with me, and I'll do anything I can to help you get connected with my network. If you need someone or you need a referral or you need anything, please connect with me. Facebook is not going anywhere anytime soon. It might not be your field right now, but what we do use it for in my industry is to connect with uh, existing clients. A lot of clients that we have, uh, they share their own information. So what we do is we pull images, we pull information, and we use that for their marketing of their business. So. Facebook, even though it's not relevant to you now, it will be. Um, another reason why I hired Harley, the girl I was telling you about, is I also know that I want to transition different groups, different demographics into specific social media markets, right? So I don't have to force high school students to like Facebook. I can go and market if the client, if it works out with the client, to Snapchat or Instagram, but I have to have a way to transition them to the next step, which might be Twitter to the next step in the, as they grow up to maybe Facebook. So when I'm looking at all of this, I'm looking at, I don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. I have to be able to position and shift these demographics to different areas, which is huge because you just don't go in and say, marketing is a one-stop shop and this is what we're gonna do. No, you have to anymore look at the market and where it's going, your research, your trends, right? I know you guys, I, I remember you said you do uh, market research. Where are they? Where can you, guide them. Now, I'm always trying to be innovative. I'm not saying that you have to go all in and spend all this money to try to move them because it, sometimes it's not practical. What I am saying is sometimes the best thing you can do is to think outside the box and say, you know what, maybe this marketing plan isn't working because we need to transition them into some, in a different market, a different industry that they're not ready for or that they might be ready for. So keep an open mind. Sometimes the numbers are, are great to have perspective but you still have to have that creativeness. You still have to have that collaboration to see what you can do to market, to make it into a, into a successful outcome. But that's my own personal views, so. Video is gonna be huge. It's gonna be probably a $5 billion industry online within the next three to five years. And I say that because we all see the little, and I hate the stupid little cat videos. Oh God, if I see another cat video, I'm gonna die. But. Cat videos are popular, why? Well, we know why. Because a majority of the population are cat lovers. Why are they cat lovers? Because a majority of people online are who? Male or female? Female. female. And if you go, if you look at some of the statistics, we, some of it sounds very cliche, but it's not. Women are online, those videos are shared. It's, women make up 60 to 70% of the online market on social media. Now they break down individually on each one of them specifically. And then you break down the demographic of the students and the kids, that's when it gets really fun. Have you done any research on social media? Uh, what were some of the fascinating numbers that you that you remember that popped out? Anything? Yeah. Um, I work for the alumni association and I do all of their Twitter and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I've realized that most people who do use Facebook are between the ages of like 25 and 40. Yeah, it's a much lower number than what people think. Did you also find out that the rise of the 45, 50 plus is increased? It's small, yeah. but it's increasing drastically. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, obviously the 40 year olds are getting older and they're transitioning into that, but grandkids, younger kids are transitioning, getting them the, the, the grandparents on there. So when you look at the cycle, you're going to have a much more broader audience of people on social media within 10 to 20 years because they've all grown up with it. They're all transitioning through it. So another reason why marketing online is not going anywhere. And I am a little biased because that's what we do. So, but yes, it's an, it's an interesting topic. Video, huge. I'm doing Periscope today because I know that. So does it actually tell us right now how many, uh, what do we got, got anybody viewing? I think so. During the day, it's hard. Usually it gives you a number. Anybody asking questions yet? Not yet. Okay. So uh, I've done, this is like my fourth or fifth one, and these usually go really well. I had a ribbon cutting, not everybody could attend. So I put it on uh, Periscope, and I was shocked 
people are in Indiana, hey, thanks for streaming it. And I have people in the community, yeah, we weren't able to make it, but I saw that uh, post on Twitter and we started watching it. I was shocked because really I had, I thought it was going to be a real, no offense, a waste of time, but I wanted you, sometimes you just have to train, you have to start somewhere and you have to start putting it out there because if you start and stop, then nobody's going to watch. If they see that you're consistently doing something, then you're probably going to start building an audience. All right, so how do you get results? There's no secret answer here for you guys, but I will tell you how I rate results as far as when it comes to marketing online through social media, email marketing, uh, and just optimizing websites. You measure, measure success through meaningful connections and engagements. So I'm kind of like anti-common core. So some of the best things that your teachers instruct you are not measurable items. I'm sure that if you go back, and I remember this, I have maybe one class that I remember that benefited me for teaching that was strictly by, that could be uh, graded. It could be tangibly graded. The rest of I learned, not graded. It came from me and it came from my instructors giving me real life experiences and sharing their, 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 their knowledge. So when you look at this and you think about, okay, social media, it's not necessarily likes, it's not tweets or retweets, it's engagement. It's an actual engagement of a conversation. Now, you can utilize social media and hashtags, right, to go out and find clients and engage them, which is what I like to call stalking, because yeah, it really is, you're stalking for clients. You go on, uh, perfect example, uh, anybody attend Heronfest uh, music concert? Anybody? No, are you familiar with it? Okay, so a big concert. This was our second year being involved. We used a consistent hashtag. We incorporated everybody to use that, We every marketing. So the following year, guess what we did? We used the same hashtag, but I went back and did a search on that hashtag, which was Heron Festa, hashtag Heron Festa. And what do you think I did? Or I shouldn't say me, my team and I did. Well, we saw how many were used. We went a step further. We went in and said, hey, glad you enjoyed it last year because we know the date. Here's a link to our new tickets, there's pre-order. If you do this, you'll get a coupon code or whatever. We increase by 60% our pre-sell tickets from the previous year, 60%. Hashtags are not a fad to be funny. Hashtags are literally a way to tag something so you go back to it and reuse it, re-market it. The beauty is if you get your, if you're representing businesses like we are and you get them to buy into the hashtag, and you say, hey, you know, if you liked our shirt, make sure if you go out and post or if you go zip lining, use this hashtag, right? So you use the hashtag and like, oh, that's cool, but it's not, it doesn't end there. You can go back and target those people, the same people for coupons, gifts, simply saying thank you, all those things, and they've tagged themselves. What you want is your clients, your customers to market your businesses. It sounds crazy, but it's great. Uh, we do some nonprofit stuff. Currently, we're working with Bald Knob Cross, and that's a great example. Bald Knob Cross, they, a lot of people that go there, they use Instagram images, they use the hashtag, hashtag Bald Knob Cross. We go back, we wanna use them, we tweet them, we message them and say, hey, we'd like to feature your photo. We do that, we write content for it, and it saved us a lot of time. As a person that does social media, you know it's really about content, and content takes time. So if you have something that you can pull from and, and create and elaborate and make better, it makes your job so much easier than starting from scratch. So don't forget hashtags. Become an expert and have people come to you. I don't like the term expert, but unfortunately in the world that we live in, people will gravitate towards people because they think they know more, they're experts, right? Uh, what you want to do is for people to think that you have answers or solutions because then you're associated with that. That's why, you know, it's two years now that we've had, we've rebranded, uh, we rebranded the name, but we started doing, we went from IT services to marketing about October of uh, two years ago and re researched, researched. So everybody thinks social media when they think of me, when I get a lot of questions. I do a lot of stuff with Apple because I'm a huge fan, so they, my nickname's iTom, so I get a lot of that. Um, but people come to me for answers, and what you want is that's, you want to be known for a solution person, not an expert, but a solution person, because it gives you validation credibility for anything that you do moving forward. 
So when you're on LinkedIn, talk about some of those discussions online. If you see an article that you disagree with, talk about it. When people start seeing your name, your image over and over, they start to associate you with that, right? That's what's important. So if I asked, does anybody feel like they're a solution finder or an expert in something specifically today? Would you, would you be able to tell me? What about you? What are you really good at? What do you think you have a good grasp on? Honestly, yes. I have a good grasp on movies. <laughs> okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Movie quotes do great online. Yeah, like everybody calls me, hey, who's in this movie? I'm like, okay, it's this person, and then they hang up. Okay, so back in our time, our parents, it was all about, oh, don't waste, your time, don't waste your time on video games, right? And now that's a huge industry. People are, I mean, so don't discount. So thank you for sharing that, by the way, because that's awesome. There's a lot that you can use with movies down the road. It's gonna come in handy. You'll never know it, but if you keep going, with it, it's gonna come in I handy. I made a lot of threads. So I see, watch the same movies. <laughs> there you go. What are you really good at? What do you think? Uh, I'm really good at public speaking. Public speaking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of public speaking? Anywhere from um, persuasive to how tos to even um, more discussion based, where I get the audience involved. Awesome. So, do you have? Are you always constantly trying to get your craft better and better? Okay, so, and I'm sure you probably look and let other people when they present and try to critique and think, oh, I like that, I don't like that, oh, that went well, that doesn't go well. That's important. So those are skills that you need to have. And now that I know that, maybe I will, after this, ask you for some advice, right? Because I don't necessarily know that you're an expert, but I know that you have a passion for that. So I wanna know, from your perspective, how we did, or how I did. What about you? Good with people. Good with people. What kind? Okay, so what kind of people? Uh, and just like you with? engaging people, meeting people, talking to people. I guess I'm pretty good at helping people solve problems too. Okay, so you're the person I need to go to if I have a problem. You're going to help me get connected with the right one. That's all we can ask. Is the best that you can. He's being modest. He's also attending school a little longer than he otherwise would have to because he wanted his history degree in addition to his communication degree, because he has multiple passions. Nice, nice. Every one of you, and it'll change, every one of you should be an expert or a solution finder in something and own it, be passionate about it. You don't have to be perfect, but know when to be humble, know when to say, yeah, I don't know that, I better find this out or I'll go ask someone else. But those are the things that you need to do. But be an expert, then people come to you and it, 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 it's so much easier when people come to you. It's a, it's a curse too, because you get bombarded a lot. But if your heart's there and your passion's there, you continue to help people, that's what matters. Oh, I forgot to change the slide, <laughs> sorry. I gave, the, I gave the CEO, I thought I changed, I put the wrong one up. I gave the CEO group uh, homework. I posted some uh, questions on Facebook and Twitter in a couple places and I said, I want you to bring to class these answers to these three questions because I knew they probably wouldn't. And guess what? Nobody knew. So they didn't know what I was doing. So this was for them when I asked them to, because they weren't owning. They weren't owning the CEO program. Uh, the PSR program, you need to own it, meaning you need to promote it. The SIU, this degree, you need to promote it because it does two things. It helps build the program and it helps build you because it helps network with you with the program. How many of you, well actually I don't know, the PSR probably has one, but does the department, the school department, do they have any social media, Twitter, anything like that? I'm not familiar. I don't know, dude. Like we have, hmm? as far as like the the university hold does, but not like individual programs, I don't oh, think. I don't know. Oh, oh, they do? Yeah. I mean, I think really for you guys, just supporting the PSR program on Twitter, Facebook, and whatever you guys have, that's important. Um, and what I told these guys was, you know, you can set up notifications and alerts. Facebook will let you get the content right away. You can push it up to the timeline. Uh, Twitter, you can get notifications. You can follow them and actually know, so that way you don't have to search. And it comes in every time, and that way you can say, oh yeah, that's pretty good, I'll retweet that, or oh, there's an Instagram, or... Uh, you need to do those things. You need to support the programs or the businesses, the organizations that you're in, and you need to do that socially, because it's huge. It really gets people out there and, and knowing that. I'm not, in fact, I will, how many of you are not following P the PSR on Twitter or Facebook? I'm not. 
So everybody else is. So you and I, are, we we better step up our game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we better do that. All right. Top three secrets. I'm gonna go through these. Where's our what's our time? Because I want to give you time to ask questions. Uh, yeah, we're we're at eleven forty-two. Okay. Let's hurry real quick. So these are what I consider some secrets. They're not really secrets, but I think they just need to be reminded and I'll put these up here real quick. All right, define your brand. What do you stand for? Don't be wishy-washy. It's okay if you wanna be conservative or liberal, if you wanna be straight out Republican, I'm trying to come up with polar opposites, but whatever your business is, be known for it and own it, okay? Don't go back on certain things because it just doesn't look good. Starbucks has done that. Um, Home Depot has done that. There's many different businesses that say they are, and then they go back on stuff. Own it. Now, owning it means that you're probably going to lose revenue, or you might gain revenue, but either way, own it. Are you marketable? Do you, would you give yourself this, the time of day if you saw what you wrote, what you posted, your images, your professional images online? Now, I'm also a huge craft beer drinker. So there is evidence on my Twitter and my stuff that I like craft beer. I'm not changing that part about me. What it doesn't say, at least I hope it doesn't, and most everybody says this, that I'm an alcoholic, that I have, that you're gonna, I'm gonna get drunk and I'm gonna tweet and do all this stuff. No, I have a passion for craft beer, and that's very, and in the, in the Cubs. So that's pretty prevalent online. There's, it's, I'm known for certain things, okay? Will you connect with the market that you're going for? So when you're branding yourself or the business, are you connecting with that demographic? Is it, I mean, are you trying to just sell, sell, sell? Are you trying to connect, connect? Are you trying to do a combination of the two? What are you trying to do to connect with the audience? And again, own it. There's nothing wrong with that. You cannot market, and please tell me if I'm wrong. You guys can tell me. I just don't think you can market to everybody. You can't. You have to know your demographic. You have to do the research on where you make money. And can you make money selling to this market? If you start selling 5,000 widgets, people are gonna be confused. Sell three things and use marketing to let those demographic that you're selling those three things to know that you've got these other services. Plus it makes job security much better. So when you're always having to market other things down the road. Develop a voice. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? Not like a Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck Pluto voice, right? What does it mean to develop a voice? Go ahead. Yeah, just to speak up, and like you said, be recognized for what you do speak up in your day. It's a little more than that. Yeah. It's like who you are and what you're passionate about, like how you are in person. Okay. Uh, anybody follow Quattro's on Twitter? You should, you should follow Quattro's on Twitter. They do a really good job of capturing a voice. So when I say voice, it's almost like the pizza has a voice, right? Uh, a business can have their own voice be unique to them. It's how they say things, how they word things. Same with you. Uh, it's how you articulate yourself in person is also how you articulate yourself online. So if you use a lot of LOLs and, and I'm not picking on anybody, and abbreviations and everything, that's what people are gonna associate you with. If you are very proper and professional, they're gonna see you that way. If all you do is put out jokes and funniness or um, political stuff, that's how you're gonna be known. That's your voice. That's what people think your voice is. But we're so much more than that. Unfortunately, online, we don't get the interaction. I don't get to see if you're smiling. I don't get to see if you're upset. I don't know if you're joking. And I don't care what anybody says, having emojis and all that doesn't really explain emotion as much as what you think it is, okay? So developing a voice, huge. This is the one area that I want to work on for our clients, but I think Quattro's does a great job on their Twitter feed of making the, their voice for pizza. It's like you're not working with them. You're not talking to an actual person. You're talking to pizza, which is brilliant. I love it. No, no, no. Jump in. Like White Castle, I tweeted one time, like, this is the perfect time for White Castles. And then they tweeted me back, like, um, I forgot what they said, but they said something as if their product was speaking to me. Yeah, I love that. That is harder than what you think. Uh, I, I, I would, I'm, and I'm working on that. That's one of my goals is I want to give our, our clients a better voice instead of just speaking. Um, are you humorous? Are you serious? Who do you want to be? And then the next, be consistent. That means time, frequency, and your images. You have to be consistent with the branding, right? 
Uh, that's why people still use billboards, especially the digital ones. You go by, you see that every day, right? You need to be consistent online with what you're putting out there. And you have to do it where you're not gonna fade away. And, and this again, this is job security for many of you. So those are things. We don't have to see any of this. If we just see those golden arches anywhere we go in the world, what does that mean? McDonald's, how awesome is that? Now yeah, they spent billions and billions of dollars to get that embedded into us, right? But that's all they need right there. They might even get away with just that too, but really that's it. They could just put that anywhere on a paper and no words, no nothing, and everybody's gonna know what it is. Brand recognition, right? Okay. Well, I'll share that, I'll split this, we'll, we'll move past that. So shameless plug for us. So if you want to follow, make sure you go online, Harness Digital Marketing. We're also on Twitter for the short handles, we're at Harness DM, DM. But um, I wanted to give you guys some time to ask some questions. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, next week I am leaving to go to the Ukraine to present at a social media uh, digital marketing conference for journalists over there. So uh, you, you would have asked me, well, anytime, if I'd be going to the Ukraine to present on digital marketing, I would have laughed at you. But uh, just to show I put myself out there, I was asked to present at WSIL for this group of Ukrainian groups that they have a, a, a partnership with. And the lady loved me so much, she's like, hey, I wanna book you. And I thought it was for September of next year. And I found out it was this year. I was like, three days later, I had my ticket, I had everything, and I started to freak out. I'm not gonna lie, because mm -hmm. you know it's it's the Ukraine and in the southwest southwest part, they're having a lot of turmoil, but I'll be in Kiev. So you never know. I never asked for it, never had any, any dream of like, hey, I hope that someday as a social media digital marketing specialist, I get to go present in Ukraine. Nope, never in a million years. I would like New York, maybe, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, but you never know, so keep putting yourself out there. So questions, you know he's getting out of here. I wanna hear questions. Yes? Um, I'm actually from around this area, and it's kind of a joke that I make, oh man, I bet you wanna get out of here to get a job. You know, and I, that makes me feel bad because I don't wanna leave. Right. But so what made you stay and wanna build your business in this area? Uh, well, I have family, yep. and obviously I taught. Uh, I did research, you know, and it was the back to the numbers. Could we do this and make money? Uh, the best thing from a, an entrepreneur business owner standpoint, I can tell you, keep your overhead low. Don't get caught into over marketing and fancy buildings and fancy anything. I'm able to keep my overhead low, which means I can pay most uh, other than my high school student. Everybody starts out at my place at $10 an hour. We know how many clients, I know exactly how many clients we have to have. So could we sustain it here? And that's one of the reasons why we just rebranded from Harness Tech Ed to Harness Digital Marketing was because we are now branching out to go more national and international. So in a roundabout way to answer your question, it was really a combination of my love and passion, which is what you have, and doing research to say, okay, is this a valid business? Because everybody, a lot of people have ideas, uh, but you have to see if you can make money at it. I mean, that's, that's really it. The one reason why I wanted to start this job was to create unique, different jobs for Southern Illinois community. These are not huge, high paying jobs yet. We're considered still a startup because we're only two years in. So that's the hardest part for me to find people to buy into that. I'm not looking for, um, anybody familiar with Office Space, the movie? Yeah. I'm not looking for the, the, the normal flair. I want someone that wants to wear, you know, not just six pieces of flair, they want 20, right? Those are the people that I'm looking for. I want motivated people. Uh, self-motivated people and I want people that will be able to uh, challenge me and be able to help me learn and grow and, and, and can bring something different to the table so my, my, my suggestion to you is if this is what you want find a way to make it I think these markets these jobs are gonna be bigger uh, my main competition is just everybody that thinks their uncle or cousin can do it and it's cheap right I'm not cheap what we do is very it's about time we go out we do things we have analytics we do everything we educate our clients but I can't compete with someone that says, hey, I'll do it for a hunt. You can then do it. Back to market reading marketing, right? I'm not, then that's not the kind of clients I'm looking for, the $100 a month kind of things. Now we're not overly expensive, but we know what it costs, how much time we spend on each client, and that's what you have to do. Other questions? We actually might get uh, 
might be interested in getting our applause on camera here for the end of the Periscope session because we will lose the room. I see the heads starting to gather outside. So let's all, first of all, thank Mr. Harness for coming in and talking to us today. Well, I hope it was very good. It was very good. Everybody follow up online and even afterwards here after we adjourn with your questions and feedback. Absolutely. Connect with me on LinkedIn for sure. All of the above. Thank, thank you, videographer. Sir. Hold on, we gotta get Did you stop it? I have no Don't idea. stop it. But, thank you. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> yeah, I tell my